Hey folks, I'm Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out another all-in-one flight controller stack. This time around, I'm checking out the GEP RC Taker G4 35 amp. <laughs> Doing a quick unboxing, we've got some product literature. So nice colorful instruction manual over here. Next, we have the flight controller itself, and this thing is super tiny. And then finally, some accessories. First, we have an XT30 connector and it comes with a very thin 18 gauge wire. Typically, these have a 16 gauge, but I guess if you're going for super lightweight, this makes sense. We have a bag of extra gummies. That's nice to see. We've got a 35 volt, 220 microfarad capacitor. And then finally, we have two cable connections. I really can't believe how they made this so small. This is so small that one of the components over here is actually hanging just a bit off the board. Now that is true commitment to compactness. Take a closer look at the Taker G4. The microprocessor is an STM32 G4. This does have an ICM42688-P gyro, exactly the same gyro as the latest AIO I reviewed from SpeedyB, so that thing performs just fine. It does have 16 megabytes of black box storage, which is okay, it's nothing too spectacular, but 16 megabytes should be enough. There is no barometer on this, so we are making a couple of compromises given the smaller size. It does support a five volt, three amp back. That is all that it has. There is no nine volt, no 12 volts. All you get is five volts. It does only support two to four S LiPo. So don't go running this on a six S. Again, we're making a couple of compromises here. The installation pattern is a 25 by 25 and the actual size is 33.4 by 34.4. Again, that's quite compact. And it does have four sets of UARTs, which is great. On the speed controller side, it supports 35 amps of continuous current. It can burst up to 45 amps, but only for a five second kind of increment there. And it supports both BL Heli S and Blue J. So you definitely want to run this on Blue J. In terms of connections, we do have a connector here for the DJI air unit, and then we've got a USB type C connector here so we can set this up on the computer. Now let's do a quick weight check. This thing is super light with the gummies. It weighs 8.53 grams. That is insanely light. I've got the new flight controller all installed. I went with this kind of orientation, USB port coming out this side, which matches with my O3 air unit. I wired up my Express LRS receiver to these points over here as recommended in the manual of the flight controller. Good thing with these points is that once it connects to the computer, the receiver does also activate and that's a great feature. We don't want to take that for granted. And then I did connect up my O3 air unit using the included connector over here and this cable, which is just the right length. If you don't want to use this cable, you can wire up your O3 air unit to these points right on the edge of the board over here. They're small, they're tight, but they do work. And then I did wire up the motors in this kind of fashion. Yes, we have some extra motor wires to contend with, but hopefully that means that these motors can be used on a subsequent build as well. And then finally, I did 3D print out a converter to convert the 20 by 20 mounting of the frame over to the 25 by 25 mounting of the all-in-one flight controller. It's Mangrel from the future here. If you do end up using that connector to plug in your DJI O3 air unit, do make sure you disconnect either just the green cable or the green and purple cable from that connector. And the reason for this is this cable uses the UR2 for the receiver component of the O3 air unit. And no surprise, the connections that I use and that's recommended for your external receiver, whether it's a Crossfire or the Express LRS, also uses UART2. And you can't have two devices trying to communicate on the same UART, which means if you don't do this, nothing will work, everything gets confused. So make sure you do that disconnection. We of course know that the Taker G4 weighs less, but how much of a difference does it actually make in a full on build? So here my Siren F35 used to weigh 161 grams with the old flight controller. Now it weighs 156 grams. So we've saved five grams or let's say two, 3%. Doesn't sound like much, but every little bit helps, especially at this low weight. Do bear in mind that the AIO comes preloaded with BL Heli S, so you do want to go to esc-configurator.com and install Blue J when you're doing your configuration. 
Okay, let's do the first flight out here on the new Taker G4 all-in-one flight controller. I'm back at the old park I used to fly at because the weather isn't very good today. And this park here I can access more easily with a vehicle. So first thing I want to do, just do a quick perimeter check here. This is what I always do on the first flights out. I just want to make sure that everything is working okay there are no weird behaviors and then we'll start to fly a bit more aggressively but you can see there is white stuff on the ground here so i'm not going to fly too aggressively i don't want to risk crashing in snow and burning this out on the first flight but so far seems to be flying okay and as i fly around more slowly here we can definitely get a feel for how this is handling the wind you can see the, the sock over there the wind sock so a little bit of, of wind not too bad right now but definitely feeling okay. As always, I did use PIT Toolbox to do my PIT tuning of this quad. I will give you links in the video description where you can actually see my, my uh, PIT settings, my actual beta flight settings, all those kinds of things. So I'm happy with this, I think this is flying okay. Let's go do a couple of maneuvers. So split X was okay. Let's do a quick right turn here. I can see a little bit of water on the lens. So I think we're starting to get a bit of snow. Let's do a power loop. Power loop was good. I'm having a tough time seeing this goalpost here. because It's all white. Let's go full throttle. Full throttle is good. No weird desync like we had last time with the Sky Stars motors. So this is flying okay. Oh, I'm getting a lot of wind gusts. Let's fly back and take a look at our windsock. Yeah, look at that windsock fly. So this is still going okay. I remember I don't use any stabilization in my flight footage. So what you're seeing is what I'm seeing. So if you see any kind of weird shakes, that is because that is what the actual quad is doing as well. But I'm not seeing any kind of weird behavior. So, so far this is flying kind of like how it should be flying and how I've seen most modern all-in-one flight controllers flying as well. Let's come up here, my usual tree. Power loop this little tree here. Oh, I think the wind got her. But uh, it's, been going, it's been going okay. And definitely I'm feeling the colder weather in my fingertips. So I'm having a little bit of a more difficult time doing these fine maneuvers power loop there we go that's better Ooh, squeeze right through here squeeze through here squeeze through here squeeze through here yes that was good squeezing okay so power look back not bad not the greatest but not bad we're three minutes in i can see the battery is starting to wind down a little bit so with the colder weather i think we are good let's come back in but first flight out initial impressions this is working quite good and this will definitely save us a little bit of weight in our super lightweight build especially when we're thinking about the 04 air unit coming out we want to save as much weight as possible we just don't know exactly how much that bad boy is going to weigh and we want to make sure that we are considerate of additional weights so we don't want to go over 250. so hope you like this video make sure to like subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos